Hey everyone, this is Bremster, and this is the next in my Sudoku problem series. Um, once again, you may have noticed if you skipped yesterday, I've changed the numbering system so that the um, in the link below and on the video, it actually based. I'm not saying which how many killers there's been. I'm just saying this is the 51st problem, and this is a killer. Um, it's going to be easier for me to track and hopefully easier for other people to keep track of. I don't think you need to know this is, I think, the seventh killer problem. Um, anyway, so um, the goal of this one, of course, is to place the digits in all of the cells marked with an X and killer rules on this one. So the digits in the cages must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. Uh, testers rated this one as medium, so hopefully it won't take you too long. Um, doing this in your head might be a little tricky. There's a num lot of numbers to keep track of, so there is a link below to where you can try this one. Um, so I'm going to wait for a few seconds so you can pause the video, and then I'll be back to explain how this one works. Okay. Um, so I really like this one. Um, this is just uh, an example of pointing digits. And I like to start this one with the low digits. So we know that a three cage can only be made up with one and two, the smallest digits possible. A four cage can only be made up with one and three, but there's a one in one of these two cells pointing at this. So this has to be three and one. A three cage has to be one and two, but there's a one pointing at it. So this is two and one. And a four cage has to be one and three, but there's a one pointing at it. So this has to be three and one. And the one here looks back at the original making this two and one. Now we can do the same thing here with the 17 cages. 17 cages have to be eight and nine. 16 cages have to be seven and nine. But now these nines are pointing at them. So this nines here point at this, making this eight and nine. The nine looks down, making this seven and nine. The nine looks across, making this eight and nine. The nine looks up, making this seven and nine. Now we've got four nines looking into box five. So this we can't put nine here or here or here or here. So this becomes a nine. Now these outside ones may look more tricky, but they're actually not really because these two nines are looking into this box. So we know there has to be a nine here. These two nines are looking into here. So we can't put nine here or here. So we have to put a nine into here. But we know that there's a nine looking at that one from these two. So that's not the nine. This is the nine. And now we have to put a nine in one of those two because of these two nines. But this nine is knocking it out of there. So that becomes a nine. And now because of these two nines, we have to put a nine in one of these two. And that nine prevents that one. So that becomes a nine. And that goes back to the original one, takes that nine out and puts a nine in there, leaving us with just four cells. And we can start up here. What can be here? Well, this eight eliminates eight from those, and this eight eliminates eight from those, but there's no eight in this box. This has to be an eight. This one, we can't put a seven in any of those or a seven in any of those, so that has to be the seven. Down here, we can't put an eight in any of those because of that eight. We can't put an eight in either of those because of that eight, but we still need an eight in the box. And over here, we've got the same problem with sevens. Seven can't go in any of those. Seven can't go in any of those, but we still need to put a seven in the box. That becomes a seven, and that completes this killer problem. I really like this one. It is the basic fundamental trick of pointing digits. Very, very cool, and I like it a lot. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series and as always, good luck with your solving.